Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, the Meteor Raptor, and I am back here with a brand new movie review. Today, I'm going to take a look at a 2012 DC Universe original animated movie. That movie is The Dark Knight Returns Part 1. Yeah. Uh... I don't actually own a copy of it. But I was at a local video store a couple days ago and they had it. They had parts 1 and part 2 and I will be reviewing part 2 like in a couple days. So I decided I was gonna, I really wanted to see this thing so I decided, you know what, it's, I'm gonna just give it a shot. Uh, I'd like to say, I have read the graphic novel, The Dark Knight Returns, by Frank Miller, and I thought that thing was phenomenal. In fact, it is the best-selling graphic novel of all time. This thing was a masterpiece. The Dark Knight Returns Parts 1 and 2 have beaten The Dark Knight as my all-time favorite DC movie, and that's saying a lot. Like, these, I'm pretty sure that if I had, like, my favorite, five favorite, um, superhero films, Dark Knight Returns Part 1 and 2, and The Dark Knight, there would be three up there. I don't know what the other two would be, but, like, the, this thing was amazing. I'm gonna start with the writing. Well, essentially, this story, I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil, I'm, okay, spoiler alert, just coming up. Uh, essentially, the story is, it's roughly ten years after the Dark Knight Rises, and crime and gangs have just taken over Gotham, including a new team called the Mutants. Mutants. Uh, whatever. And Batman has to come out of retirement and try and stop them. That's all I'm gonna say. However, there was much, much more going on than just him fighting crime. Uh, all their characters have depth and personality. You can care whether they live or die. And, well, one reason why I like Batman and I'm not such a huge Superman fan is because Superman's like, Haha, I'm invincible, nothing can hurt me except a rock and then someone can hit me. Batman, it's like, you know what? I'm human. I don't have any superpowers. I get shot through the head, I'm dead. Like, it's realistic, it actually works. And here, when he's up against a guy who's like as strong as the Hulk at the very end, spoiler alert there, it's really gripping just to try and see who's gonna win and who's gonna, like, if he's gonna win or not, because it actually, well, you have to watch this and find out. Yeah. Um. So yeah, all the characters, Batman has the same backstory as usual, like his parents have been murdered, yada yada yada, and he's a superhero now. But our other supporting characters, such as the mutant leader and Carrie, who is also Robin, they don't have a huge amount of, they don't have as, um, as much depth as Batman does. But you know what? Carrie, she has enough depth for us to care about her as well, which is important because she is Robin. But I'm not going to spoil how that all happens. But, you know, in the Mutant Leader, they don't really explain... I, I'm pretty sure there is a comic out there where the mutants showed up in the first place. I have not read that comic yet, so I'm not really sure how the mutants... where they came from. And they don't really explain, but you know, we don't need a whole lot of explanation. So let's just... just roll with it. The acting. We had... I don't remember who was in this thing, I didn't bother to stare, because once this part ended, I had I stopped the film instantly and had to put in part two so I could keep going. But I don't remember who was the voice actors for this, but everybody turned in phenomenal showings. Uh, Batman, the mutant, the mutant gang leader, Robin, they all pulled in fantastic showings, but everyone, like the thugs, or just people who, like one of the mutant who just has to say like, Oh, hey, what's going on? And one scene, like, everyone pulled in fantastic showings to top off the fantastic writing. Now, the animation. This is something I really want to touch on. This thing is animated by DC Universe, by DC. And the animation looks amazing. Just everything, it has, like, that whole DC animated movie feel. I've seen a couple of other films. This one is their best. Now, while I'm on the subject, now, like this, the, just the animation on the buildings, the, like the people, the vehicles, 
Even the blood, which I will cover more in a second, looks fantastic. The score? Great score, nothing, it's not, I don't think the soundtrack is available for download. Like, there was no real copyright music, but the fight music was great and all that. So, at least we have that. Now, before I ask if, before anyone asks if I can recommend this, I need to talk to you all about something. The Dark Knight, Batman Begins was great, The Dark Knight, though caused actually a lot of, I believe it caused some trouble like in controversy when it came out due to how dark it was and it was only given a PG-13 rating. Uh, this thing is only rated PG in Canada, PG-13 in USA. This is the darkest movie I have ever seen in my life. Like, The Dark Knight Returns is like the part one and two, like those two are the darkest film because I'm going to call it film, because it's both one story, roughly, that I have ever seen in my entire life. Now, I'd like just to put this in a bit of perspective. There is a film out there called Combat Shock. I do not recommend anybody goes and watches that unless you are ready to just get really, really upset and depressed. Like, it is like a war film. It is just... I couldn't sit through it. I sat through the first part and decided, you know what? I can't go through with this, so I shut it off. This thing was darker than that. Yes, guys. A DC Universe cartoon movie that aired on Teletoon was darker than a trauma war movie. That ought to tell you just how dark this thing is. There is no comedy whatsoever to be found. There was no, like, comic relief. There was no humor. It is just straight-up dark gritty Batman and I loved it and please don't be upset if you can't take that kind of stuff but I thought this was great so can I recommend it yes but do not watch this movie until you watch the Dark Knight return no until you watch the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight rises you have to watch the Dark Knight trilogy to get used to the darker, grittier Batman before you even consider watching this. Or, if you just cannot take films that are really violent, dark, bloody, and bloody, because this thing is actually kind of bloody at times, then don't even go near this movie. Like, just stay away from it. However, if you love Batman, if you love just the Dark Knight trilogy, if you love, like, all the other DC Universe films and you've seen the Dark Knight trilogy, dude... Go out, watch this thing, you will love it. Is there a chance of me buying it? Oh yes, there is a very, very strong chance of me buying it. But I'll cover I'll cover the ways you can buy it a bit more when I cover part two on well in a couple days. But I'm just warning you guys now. If you guys go into this expecting something like a happy like a silly Batman movie like the nineteen sixties Adam West one you're not going to get that. Not in the slightest. But it's still really good, and I can totally recommend it, but I, I gotta wrap this up. Yeah, I can totally recommend it, but I have to put out the warning, it is very, very dark. But, you know what? You guys may, you guys may not think it's as dark as I'm thinking it is, but you'll only find out if you go and watch it. So until next time, this is the Meteor Raptor saying keep cool, and I will see you guys around.